All right, this is going to be my first video probably in a series of videos about the um, nine times a circuit and board. Um, I just wanted to uh, start off and get a few things clear what I was working towards and what I'm working with. So I'm not going to use a transformer starting out. I'm just going to start with the two inductors. Um, and work forward from there. I'll get to the transformer, but the first experiments are just going to be two inductors and then down the road I'll add in the transformer. Um, and also, in the schematic, it's a um, pulsed DC. It's a rectified AC signal um, to the um, optos. And something I can do, or anyone else working on um, the nine times a circuit uh, can do is smooth out the signal, and uh, that might lead to better results, I would imagine, uh, but maybe not. It'd be interesting to experiment with, so I'm definitely going to try that. Um, I'm An issue with not using a transformer. So, this is really going to apply to what I am going to be doing without the transformer. Anyone not using a transformer and just using chokes, and uh, definitely the um, A times A circuit, how it's supposed to be. So, when the inductors charge up, they create a magnetic field. Um, when you turn the power off, that magnetic field is going to collapse and try to keep the same and try to keep current moving through the circuit. The problem is the circuit is going to be open when you have um, when you're using an SCR or a transistor or your switching device and you just have the two chokes. So it's going to create a high voltage across your SCR or transistor which isn't really good. Uh, that's not um, that's not really what we want happening. So maybe I can draw it out here. Alright, so when you're just using two chokes and you um, and uh, the pulse terminates, it's going to look like this. It's just going to be open. And uh, so all the voltage is going to be across your switching device. Now if you have a transformer in there, it creates a, a loop. It creates a circuit. So now, even before someone gives me a hard time about this. Even with the diode in there, um, with the closed loop, with the transformer, um, the chokes can discharge across the capacitor. Now, I wonder if it has to be a transformer or an inductor, and I'm sure it doesn't have to be you can possibly put a diode across or just an inductor I'm gonna try it out because in my experience the transformer transformers are just a complicated thing um, you, there's a lot of engineering that's gonna go into that um, once I start using one and probably a lot of problems I have to work out uh, mainly it screws up the signal you got a core Hopefully you could find one that's for the right frequency. Um, you have to design it so that the primary inductance is correct um, to handle how uh, much amperage you're going to be putting in there or it's going to just be um, you know, very little resistance once the magnetic field charges up to its maximum point. So uh, I'll stop rambling now. Get into the video.
So this is the non-XA setup, powered by a Variac, goes to the non-XA board, over to the transistor and the resistor, two chokes, um, don't have a transformer right now in this test. About 50 milliamp. Forty-five volts max. There's the waveform. Small, small amount of per production. Um, the scope probe is set up uh, directly across the cell, and uh, since the AC supply is not isolated, I'm not using the. Um, isolated ground uh, shown in the schematic. So here is an LED lit up um, from the cell acting as a capacitor. Um, it's no longer connected to the inductors or the rest of the circuit. So uh, it is acting like a capacitor and this is a... Okay, so now the cell is producing um, hooked up to this power supply. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to unplug this and uh, um, hook the leads up to the LED again. So turn this off. So there you go. <clears throat> now what this is showing is that the cell itself is going to act like a capacitor no matter what. Um, especially in this setup where you have tubes in series. So even with uh, regular electrolysis where you add chemicals to the water, there's still a breakdown voltage of like 1.4 volts or whatever it is. Um, so if you're using natural water, it'll be a little higher. So uh, that's the charge that's going to be left. That looks like pretty good gas production. We're at uh, maybe around two thirds of an amp, 84 volts max. It fogged up real quick. But uh, it might look like good gas production, but since I haven't taken a measurement, it doesn't actually mean anything. <laughs>